Hello and welcome to this session. Today we are going to look at the hip joint. We are looking at the contents of the hip joint. This is the uh, outline for the tutorial. We'll be looking at the articular surfaces followed by the joint capsule, ligaments, innervation, blood supply, movements and muscles that do act on the hip joint. All right, so let's move on. The hip joint um, is a ball and socket uh, joint and um, it's a type of the synovial joint. It normally connects the pelvic girdle to the lower limb. So the head of the femur articulates with the acetabulum of the pelvic uh, hip bone. So the hip joint is multi-axial joint. Uh, and what this means is that it permits a wide range of motion, um, uh, ranging from flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, external rotation, internal rotation, and circumduction. So when you compare it with the other ball and socket joint, which is the shoulder joint or the uh, glenohumeral joint, you find that this joint sacrifices a mobility for stability. So, uh, you know, this is normally designed for weight bearing. So whereas the shoulder joint is so mobile, uh, this one is is associated with stability, okay? It's a weight-bearing joint. So the entire weight of the upper body is normally transmitted through this joint to the lower limbs during standing. And the hip joint is the most stable joint in the human body because of uh, uh, that arrangement, All right? Correct. So we could have the articular surfaces. Of course, the articular surfaces include the head of the femur, and the lunate surface of the acetabulum. Ligaments, we are going to have iliofemoral, pubofemoral, ischiofemoral, intracapsular, transverse ligament of the acetabulum, ligament of the head of the femur. In aversion, we are going to have the femoral nerve, obturator nerve, superior gluteal nerve, nerve to the quadratus uh, femoris. Blood supply, we are going to have the medial and lateral circumflex femoral arteries. Obturator arteries, superior and inferior gluteal art, uh, arteries. Movements, we're going to be having flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, sternal rotation, internal rotation, and circumduction. Remember, this joint is also referred to as the coxal joint. Okay, so we have the femur, the femur, the head of the femur articulating with the lunate surface of this acetabulum. This is the pelvis, guys. All right, great. So um, let's look at the next thing. And uh, we'll start with by articular surfaces. So the joint, uh, the hip joint, is the articulation between the ellipsoid head of the femur and the hemispherical concavity of the acetabulum located on the lateral aspect of the hip bone. So the femoral head is normally covered with articular uh, that is cartilage, that's a highland cartilage with the exception of the rough central depression. That's where the foveus capitis, and uh, this is a surface of attachment for the ligamentum of the femoral head. We normally refer to it as ligamentum teres capitis femoris. So at the acetabulum is formed by the fusion of the ilium, ischium, and pubis. Okay, pubis bones. It's significant. It plays a significant role in the stability of the hip joint, as it it almost entirely encompasses the head of the the femur. So the acetabulum bears a prominent semilunar region, known as the lunate surface, that is covered by articular cartilage. This lunate surface forms the an incomplete ring that occupies the superior and lateral aspect of the acetabulum uh, in its uh, its missing. Uh, its inferior segment. So this, uh, this surface is broadest in the anterior superiorly, where it bears most of the body weight during standing. The deficient, the deficient inferior aspect of the acetabulum forms the acetabulum notch. The deep central non-articular flow of the acetabulum is referred to as the acetabulum fossa. So this area is devoid of cartilage and is continuous with the acetabulum notch. It contains loose connective tissue, which is normally covered by synovium membrane. 
So attached to the margin of the cetabulum is the fibrocartilaginous collar that is referred to as acetabular labrum. This structure depends the acetabulum by raising the rim of the acetabulum slightly, thereby increasing the acetabulum articular surface by around 10%. Inferiorly to it, we have acetabulum uh, labrum, which is continuous as this transverse acetabulum ligament, bridging the acetabulum notch and transforming the notch into a foramen. Okay. Okay. So the superior aspect of the acetabulum and that of the femoral head bear the greatest pressures. These areas generally have the thickest articular cartilage. The concave acetabulum and the rounded femoral head of the hip joint, in, a, in addition to the anatomical relationship between the femur and the pelvis, particularly in the upright uh, position, make this joint incongruent. So the articular surfaces are most congruent with the hip joint, is, an, in, in, is in a, a partially flexed and abducted position. Okay. So that's what we can be able to say about articular surfaces followed by joint capsule of the hip. And uh, this is a fibrous uh, structure that surrounds and encloses the hip joint, contributing to its stability. It's also referred to as the articular capsule and is very crucial for maintaining the integrity of the joint. We have a number of features uh, related to the joint capsule. So when you look at the structure, find that the joint capsule is a dense fibrous sleeve-like structure that completely encases the hip joint. It is composed of strong connective tissue, including collagen fibers, which provide tensile strength and support to the joint. Number two is the attachment, and the capsule attaches proximally to the acetabulum rim and the transverse acetabulum ligament, forming a continuous ring around the joint. So distally, it attaches to the neck of the femur just beyond the articular margins. When you look at the components, the, the, the capsule consists of two layers. We have the outer fibrous layer and the inner synovial membrane. So the outer fibrous layer is a thick and provides structural strength to the joint. It's continuous with the periosteum of the bones involved. The inner, find that the inner synovial membrane lies in the inner surface of the capsule and it excretes synovial fluid. This synovial fluid normally lubricates the joint and nourishes the articular cartilage. Synovial membrane is the innermost layer of the joint capsule and is responsible for producing synovial membrane. This membrane, we've said, it's a lubricant. It facilitates smooth movement of the joint surfaces against each other. It also helps to nourish and provide oxygen to the avascular articular cartilage. We also have a reinforcing ligaments in the joint capsule. So this joint capsule is reinforced by ligaments that help stabilize the hip joint. These ligaments include the iliofemoral, pubofemoral, and ischiofemoral ligaments. The iliofemoral ligament is commonly referred to as the Y ligament and is the strongest ligament in the body and plays a crucial role in preventing hyperextension of the hip. Lastly, in terms of function, you find that the primary function of the joint capsule is to provide stability to the hip joint by maintaining the position of the femoral head within the acetabulum. It has prevent dislocation of the joint and provides resistance against excessive movements. So we could have the different types of ligaments that are found here. We have the iliofemoral ligament. Uh, this one um, originates from the anterior inferior iliac spine to the intertroncantic line of the femur, and uh, it helps prevent hyperextension of the hip joint. The pubofemoral ligament, this one uh, originates from the superior, superior pubis ramis, then inserts to the ilia, il, iliofemoral ligament, it reinforces the capsule anteriorly. The ischiofemoral ligament, uh, this one, you find it's from the ischial spine of the acetabulum rim to the, to the neck of the femur, and it's used to reinforce the capsule posteriorly. The transverse ligament of acetabulum, uh, this one um, is from the uh, uh, ranges across from the acetabulum notch, 
converting it into the acetabulum and foramen, it provides additional stability to the hip joint. The ligament of the head of the femur attaches to the fovea capitis on the head of the femur running with the joint capsule. It contains small artery uh, supplying blood to the femoral, to the femoral head. All right. Okay. What about the nerves? We have femoral nerve, obturator nerve, sciatic nerve, superior gluteal nerve, inferior gluteal nerve, and nerve to the periform to the piriformis. All right. We have the arteries. Uh, we have the medial circumflex uh, femoral artery. Lateral circumflex femoral artery, obturator artery, superior gluteal artery, inferior gluteal artery, and artery to the head of the femur. All right. Um, what about the venous? The venous, we have medial circumflex femoral uh, vein, lateral circumflex femoral vein, obturator vein, superior gluteal vein, inferior gluteal vein, and glute and vein from the head of the femur. The vessels, the lymph nodes, lymphatic vessels. We have the lymphatic vessels from the hip or from the capsule, external iliac lymph nodes, internal iliac lymph nodes, and common iliac lymph nodes for that matter. For the muscles, we have the hip flexors. Hip flexors, we have the iliopsis, the rectus femoris, and the sartorius muscle. The extensors, we have the gluteus maximums, hamstring muscles, semitendinous muscle and semimembranous muscle. The hip abductors, abducting, you have the gluteus medius, gluteus minimus, and tensor fasci lata. The hip uh, adductors, we have adductor magnus, adductor longus, adductor brevis, pectinus, and gracilis muscle. The lateral rotators, we have the, uh, the piriformis, the gamela superior, gamela inferior, obturator internus, and obturator externus. So we have uh, various movements that are normally enabled at the, at the hip joint, starting with flexion, extension, we have uh, abduction, adduction, medial rotation. So medial rotation, you need to turn the anterior surface of the, the thigh. Okay, towards the midline. Okay, towards the midline, the thigh towards the midline. And the muscles that will help you do this is the gluteus medius, gluteus minimus, tensor fasci, and adductor pectinus. So how do you do it? You can sit with uh, with your knee bent and then rotate your thigh inward. Okay, rotate inward. Use the muscle on the inner side of the of the hip. Okay, so you can rotate inward like that. Okay. Next, we have the lateral rotation, and the lateral rotation. You are saying you turn the anterior surface of the thigh from the midline. Okay, lateral rotation, and this one is aided by gluteus maximum, the piriformis muscle, gamela superior, gamela inferior, obturator internus, and obturator externus. So you simply sit with your knee bent and then rotate your thigh outward, outward. This is a medial, a, a lateral rotation, okay? Use the muscles on the outer side of the hip. We have lastly circumduction, and circumduction, this one is circular movement combining flexion, extension, abduction, and adduction. So combination of muscles in flexion, extension uh, do play a role. So how you do it, you just move your hip in a circular motion, combining flexion, extension, abduction, and adduction. So imagine drawing a circle with your knee. Okay, so use controlled and smooth motion involving the hip. So draw them a circle. Circumduction. All right. Okay. So in in brief, um, the contents of the the hip joint include the acetabulum, which is a cap a, a cup shaped socket in the pelvic uh, bone and receives the head of the femur. It is formed by the fusion of the three bones: the P, pubis, ischium, and ilium. Number two, we have the femoral head. This one is a round, ball-like structure at the upper end of the femur. It fits into the acetabulum, forming the ball and socket for of the hip joint. 
Next, you have articular cartilage. This is the surface of the acetabulum and the femoral head are covered by this one. So this is this is smooth and slippery tissue and helps reduce friction and allows for smooth movement within the joint. Synovial membrane. Uh, this one is the inner layer of the inner lining of the the joint capsule and is called the synovial membrane. And it secretes synovial fluid, which lubricates the joint and nourishes the articular cartilage and reduces friction during movement. Joint capsule surrounds the hip joint and connects the acetabulum and the femoral neck. And it is strong and fibrous structure that helps stabilize the, the, the joint. So we have also the ligaments that you have mentioned about the iliofemoral, pubofemoral, ischiofemoral. We have the labrum which is a ring of cartilage that deepens the acetabulum and providing additional stability. It helps to improve the concurrence of the joint surfaces. Lastly, we have blood vessels and nerves. So this uh, hip joint is richly vascularized and receiving, uh, receiving more blood, okay, more, more blood from the branches and the media and lateral circumflex femoral arteries. Nerves, including branches from the femoral and sciatic nerves, innervate the joint, providing sensory and motor function. So, guys, this is the guideline. You can use this guideline to come up with the contents of the hip joint, followed by the shoulder joint, angle joint, elbow joint, and the wrist joint. Thank you so much, and see you again.